What's going on, everybody? I hope you're all having a fantastic day, as always. We're back here at the Blue Mosaic Pond, and that's not the topic of today's video. Today, the tilapia arrive, and this morning, we started setting up the pond. But, we're gonna go ahead and look at some other stuff, too. So, like I said, this is the Blue Mosaic Pond, and it has changed a little bit. It's about half capacity with water, and all of the pearl weed has either been planted, which, let's see if you can tell the difference. Tell me which side's planted and which side's potted in the comments before I tell you. All right, this side was hand planted. This side's all potted. Um, that's quite a few of them there. So we'll see which side grows better. It's a little experiment to see which side grows more efficiently. But this is how it looked about a day ago, two days ago. Same as this is the Red Mosaic Dragon. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, I got the old Nebula Steel Pond that had an issue out uh, this morning as well. Took the parts off and replaced them with this brand new 100 gallon. So this is a Rubbermaid, you can get them at like tractor supplies, things like that. I think you can even order them on Amazon, uh, you might pay a lot for shipping that way. But hold on, it's loud back here, let me go turn off the air. Ah, so much quieter. So here it is, and basically all we do is drill a hole and put a double bulkhead in there and that seals the hole basically and allows you to screw in PVC pipe to create a uh, overflow and then since it's screw in you can swivel it and you basically easy water change then you put a sponge over it to make sure you don't suck down any fish or anything like that and then we have another hole which just secures our water uh, input. So yeah, we have an input, we got an output, doing a bare bottom, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Now the fish will arrive later today, I'll do uh, unbox them, cut them, and unbox them when they get here. This doesn't actually drain straight to the ground, it is actually connected in the back here. And you can see that is our wastewater. So that's how basically the ponds work. Now it's really cold here. It was about 29 degrees. You can see even though daylight's out, the ponds for now and most of the fish tanks are still covered. And that insulation makes a huge, huge difference. It was under 30 last night and all of these are at like 74. So happy, happy. And again, that's only being done for the tanks with fish in them. So anything covered has fish in it. The plants, it slows their growth, but it doesn't outright prevent it. So not as big of a deal. And we can see that over here. This is uh, basically just a pond full of guppy grass, but let me turn on the light here so we can see it a bit better. It's pretty full. And that floating on the surface is duckweed, which we will be feeding to the tilapia. They eat pretty much any plant, and as far as I know, we'll find out. Definitely know they eat duckweed, which is great. And then they will be eating flake food and probably get some pellet food or something like that for them. I'm not sure yet. We'll experiment, find out. So the old one is going to be, I'm gonna take all the substrate out and then fix the crack and that's gonna be the new wastewater bin. So, I don't know, probably won't do a video of that, but I'll see you guys when the fish come in. Tilapia just came in, literally minutes ago. It's still sealed, haven't taken a look inside, no idea what condition they're in. Um, it was in the mail for only two days, three days. It went priority mail, which is how we ship. 
Um, so I have pretty good faith as long as there is a heat pack or some kind of good insulation, they'll be fine. So let me cut this open. Sorry, I'm gonna do this one-handed here. All right, we've got some kind of well, letter here. More tape. Happy Fry. They weren't kidding about the fry part. That's the heat pack. Okay. Heat pack still on. Fish are feeling pretty warm. 77. All right. So we will float them in a tank for a while. Oh no, we won't float them because they are in a non air bag. So. If we actually float, tried to float this, this would drown them. We don't want to do that. So it's been a couple days. It was storming and raining and everything was covered. So I didn't get a chance to finish the video. But at, this is the 100 gallon empty tilapia pond. It's just full of uh, pearl wheat, which the tilapia will eat when they're older. I decided not to put the fry in here just because it's so big and they're so small. I really wouldn't be able to make sure they're doing all right or track their progress. So instead of putting them in the 100 gallon pond, I set them up in a much smaller grow out tank for the time being. This way it'll be cheaper to heat. Um, only one of these heaters is on, uh, but it'll be cheaper to heat and I can actually track their progress. You can see they're pretty small fry. That is them swimming around there. They're all over the place. I got about 25 of them. Um, and I'll separate them out possibly when they're a little older. But they'll eat, uh, they're actually omnivores, so they will eat uh, both protein, flake food or pellet food, and uh, plants as well, algae and plants. Actually, I don't know if they'll eat algae, but they will eat plants. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, that is the tilapia. Pretty simple. They'll grow up in here until they're uh, what they call fingerlings, where they're a couple inches big, not a couple centimeters. And then I will move them to the 100 gallon. And it's, there's not really much to look at right now until they do get bigger. So we'll come back here in a few weeks when they are uh, a little bit more interesting to look at and put them in the 100 gallon and maybe show that and talk about them some more.